Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to another episode of the Decentering Men series. So I have been hearing women talk about how they believe that decentering men is easier for privileged women. So women who are pretty privileged, you already get attention from men. Women who are already rich. Women who have already achieved whatever they wanted to achieve in life, whether it was having kids or moving to a certain country or buying their dream house. And I see a lot of women saying that it's easy for privileged women to decenter men because you're gonna get the attention from men either way, you are still gonna be seen as desirable either way, and there are groups of women out there who have never been looked at by a guy. They've never had a guy ask them on a date. They've never had a boyfriend before. They've never had a long-term relationship, and so for them, they have almost like this, uh, this curiosity about what it's like to be around a man because they don't have access to any men. And so this is why a lot of those women are online fangirling because they've never had access to a white guy before. They've never had access to a millionaire before. They've never been around. They've never met an NFL player before. They've never met a famous guy before or, you know, been at a VIP section in a club or something. And so for some women, they felt like because on this channel, because I talk about pretty privilege and stuff, some women have felt like it's easier to decenter men when you've already had plenty of them or when you even some guys will say the women who decenter men is because they're 304s or like they're hoes they've they've slept with a whole bunch of guys that's not the case for myself um but I don't shame women based on their sexual past anyway so what do you ladies think when it comes to that? Do you think that it's easier to decenter men if you are kind of like at the top of the food chain for lack of better words because you already know that you can take your pick whenever you do choose to, or you're kind of like, I don't like any of these options. Um, because I know that on this channel, the way that I discuss decentering men is I believe decentering men exists on a spectrum. So for the people who say, oh, decentering men is BS, you're trying to tell women to like be asexual or be lesbians. I've never said any of that on this channel. In fact, if this is your first time on my channel, please go check out my other video called the decentering men spectrum. Uh, and that is the video where I talk about all of the different types of decentering men. So there's the hypergamy movement, there's like the divestment movement. There are so many different ways that women are decentering men. And in that video, I go further into detail as to how they have chosen to decenter men. Look at Shira Seven. She has decentered her husband, or at least on her YouTube videos, from what we see. She appears to be kind of focusing more on herself. So I believe that it's different for everyone. But I will say, that if you are underprivileged, let's say you are struggling financially, let's say you feel undesirable and stuff, you do have to remember that whatever you desire does have some sort of power over you. So yes, that does mean that the stronger your desire is for a man, the more social power men are gonna have in your life. So you know those women who say, oh, you know, this guy called me ugly when I was 15 and like it made me um, have low self-esteem. Well, that's because when she was 15, she pedestalized men at that age or she pedestalized that particular guy or she pedestalized men's opinions of her beauty, which was why men were able to take away her perceived beauty. They were able to take away her own social power. So when I talk about decentering men on this channel, it's about taking back your power, whatever that means for you. So from my perspective, it's just about being able to live your best life, whether a guy picks you or not, or whether you decide to pick a certain guy or not. Um, this channel does not specifically put down one thing over the other. Although I will say I do not promote 50-50 relationships or hypogamy on this channel, and I never will. So if you're in one of those relationships, I'm sorry, but I don't promote that. Um, but other than that, there are no specific types of relationships that I really put down or anything. Um, we've got girls on here. Some of them are married. Some of them are single. Some of the women are remaining celibate. Some of the women are, you know, they have a boyfriend or friends with benefits, or they're just casually dating. So I don't really care what women do. But I want you guys to look at this chart here. It's the decentering men chart. I have put this on multiple YouTube thumbnails. If you look at the, the circle with the men in the center of it, that's what it looks like when you're centering men. It means that you have nothing else going on in your life. You wake up in the morning, you think about men, you wake up, you swipe on dating apps, you know, you're falling off on your own personal goals, or you're putting your life on hold in hopes of getting a man. 
versus the other one where men have a much smaller um, position in your life. So you're not prioritizing men above everything else. You're not prioritizing it above your own mental health. You're not prioritizing it above your own financial health. Because one thing that a lot of women don't realize is that when you are paying for a man's bills, that actually can harm your own personal financial health. Because it's like, if you ever want to get away from him, if he cheats on you or mistreats you, then now it's going to be more difficult for you to get away because you're already poor and he's also poor and he's just bringing more struggle into your life. And so the decentering men movement is really to help women to get out of abusive relationships. It's supposed to help prevent you from getting into these situations that are going to end up harming you mentally or even harming your children. Because a lot of us came from families where maybe your own mother put your father above you. In Christianity, that's actually, that's biblical. They teach that you are supposed to put your husband above the children. But maybe your father or your stepfather was like touching you the wrong way or he was doing something doing something that was harming your self-esteem or harming your mental health. But because your parents or because your mom was so male-centered, it affected you negatively. So that's really what the decentering men movement is. It's about making sure that your health is coming first, making sure that your safety is coming first. And it's about taking men off the pedestal and not giving them so much power to control the outcomes in your life. It's about not giving them the power to give or take away your happiness because I really do believe that um, like it's okay to desire love and to, you know, to want to feel beautiful and stuff like that. But the way that I get that feeling of feeling desirable and feeling beautiful is by beautifying myself. It's by making myself look desirable or dressing up in a way to where I feel like I look desirable. And then as a side effect, if a guy compliments me or something, then that's great. But I really do believe that there are some women out there where it's like, no, if she doesn't get a compliment from a guy, maybe she will feel very sad. In fact, I've even heard women complain about that online, like how they will go out to bars and clubs. In fact, what's her name? Oh, Stefko, she did a whole viral video about this, like going into a bar and how she was sad because she didn't get looked at at the guys in the bar. In my opinion, that is a part of, like that's being male-centered because you dressed up in hopes that you would get looked at. She even admitted that in the video. She said, if I'm gonna get looked at, tonight is gonna be the night. So she was going into the bar with the intention of getting looked at. And then when her friend, who was more effortless, who was like not as male-centered because she wasn't going in there like trying to get looked at, she was just wearing a ponytail, she said, um, when her friend ended up getting looked at, now, Oh, Stefko talked about how she was very disappointed. So in my opinion, those are examples. That's an example of being male centered because you, in that moment, you were hinging your happiness and you were hinging your perception of your own beauty on some random guys in a bar looking at you or looking back at you versus someone who already knows they're beautiful or they already feel beautiful or they're simply not even looking for a guy. Like they're not even thinking about, are the guys in the bar looking at me? They're just going to have fun with their friends and you know they just happen to get looked at. So that's the difference between being male centered and like being more decentered, or at least that's my point of doing it on this channel. But I also feel like the reason that people say that privileged women are more likely to be decentered, or you know that pretty women who get a lot of uh, views and likes and stuff on social media that they're more likely to not want to date the average guy. Well, I believe that part of it is because when you level up yourself as a woman, it could be your looks, it could be money, it could be career. Um, I do believe that you're less likely to be codependent because you already have your own million dollar company. So you're less likely to be impressed by a guy who makes six figures. You already have a lot of beauty, like you already feel beautiful every day. You already know you're desirable because of all the attention you get in everyday life. So yeah, you might not be as impressed by some random guy saying you have a nice body or something because you know that you have a nice body. You look in the mirror every day. And so the reason that I talk on this channel a lot about privilege stacking and kind of owning your beauty and giving yourself social power through your beauty, the reason I talk about those things is because if you give yourself the pedestal, you're not going to be begging for other people to give you a pedestal. Notice all the women online who complain like, XYZ type of guys don't like me and you know they they don't protect me black men don't protect black women and so and so types of guys they don't pick me and it's like well you're looking for that man to give you the pedestal as opposed to just giving it to yourself and saying no I'm not centering my pedestal around whether or not you will give it to me I can protect and provide for myself 
One thing that I cannot stand is when people try to say that men are natural protectors and providers. It's like, why would I expect random men to protect me when historically men are the ones who started wars? These are all, all races of men, not even, not just black men or anything, but like men are the ones who created racism. They created colorism, texturism, featurism, um, misogyny. They created patriarchy. Men are the ones who created war. They created uh, slavery and stuff like that. So why would I look to that same demographic of people to suddenly protect me and put me on a pedestal and make me feel beautiful and make me feel confident. You need to make me feel validated. Why would I expect that? That's idiotic. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but I am saying that if you find a guy who does that or whatever, that's more of a needle in a haystack situation. That's more of an exception and the exceptions don't make the rule. And so with the decentering men movement, it's really about um, finding other ways to give those things to yourself. So everything you're seeking in a man, can you do that within yourself? So for example, for the women who are wanting to feel beautiful, are you able to feel beautiful if a man is not in the room? Are you able to feel desirable if a man doesn't compliment you? Or if you walk into a bar and nobody looks at you, is your self-esteem going to be crushed because the random dusties who were sitting at the bar drinking scotch, they didn't look at you? A part of decentering men for me, it means not considering a man's feelings as being more important than my own. So it's like, even if this random man at the bar doesn't feel like I'm beautiful, what I feel about myself is most important. How do I feel about my own beauty? That's an example of decentering men because I'm, I'm putting the responsibility and the accountability for my self-esteem, I'm putting it back on myself. Hence why it's called self-esteem. It's not called men in the bar esteem. It's not called Instagram like esteem. It's called self-esteem, meaning that it comes from within. And don't get me wrong, I do believe that guys looking at you or buying you drinks, those are what I would call micro-validation. I just made that word up because I can't think of any other word. But micro-validation, yes, that can help you. But I, I really don't think that it's very sustainable to build your entire self-esteem just based on micro validation alone. At, at some point, you're going to have to learn how to comfort yourself, how to soothe yourself, how to make yourself feel beautiful, because you're not going to be around other people who are going to validate you 24 seven. That's unrealistic. People aren't just going to walk around just complimenting you. No, other people have their own lives. And so there will always be times where you're not going to be the center of attention where, you know, maybe your friend, maybe it's her special night and some guy walks up to her just like Ostefka when she was in the bar with her friend, the guy looked at her friend that night. So you do want to have something to fall back on, aka self-esteem, when you are not receiving those micro validations from men. So that's what the decentering men movement is really about. It's just about taking them off the pedestal. It's about having an identity outside of your relationship status, because I've noticed that a lot of people, they will shame you. Like a lot of women will shame you if you're not married. Women will sometimes shame you if you're a single mother or if like, you know, you didn't last with your baby daddy or something happened, you guys broke up. Um, People, people will shame women if you're like some sort of sex worker, if they think that you are slutty or if they think that you're sleeping with a lot of guys or if you're a side chick or something like that, you're some sort of escort. I've noticed that women will shame you for that, but they don't realize that by doing that, they are actually placing women on a hierarchy based on their relationships with men. So the top of the food chain would be the wife, the second would be fiance, then after that is girlfriend, then below that would be like baby mama, then below that, and it's like, I don't do that on this channel. I'm decentering men altogether. So I do not tie a woman's self-esteem or like I don't tie her, her worthiness and her desirability to her being married. Because another thing is, just because a woman is married, that does not mean like, oh my God, I'm so much better. I'm more desirable than all these other women. No, that just means that you were desirable for marriage to that one guy. Okay, so it doesn't mean that she is better than all the other women in society or she's more desirable than everybody else as a whole. Well, no, that's not true because if it were true, then we would have way more guys who are hitting on married women or like, you know what I mean? Like sex workers wouldn't be popular. Um, being single, nobody would want to be single. And who do we see that behavior with more? More. We see that behavior with men more than women. So it's like, why are we allowing men to project 
that mindset onto us women. That's what I mean when I say decentering men. It means looking at yourself through your own eyes and not looking at yourself through the eyes of a man. So when you look in, in the mirror, you want to say, okay, what do I think of myself? What features do I like on myself? As opposed to what features would a man like on me? Okay, he wouldn't like my stomach. He wouldn't like my nose. He wouldn't like my skin tone. Those are all examples of being more male centered. So on this channel, it's not about like, oh, you know, X, Y, Z relationship that makes you male centered. And then this other relationship means you're not male centered. No, it, it goes deeper than that. In my opinion, it's more nuanced than that. Decentering men is just about giving yourself different options. It's about being able to be happy with or without the marriage with or without that guy's attention with or without him thinking you're beautiful. Another aspect of decentering men that I support on this channel is it's not just decentering men romantically. It's about decentering sons, decentering your father, decentering your brothers. Because think about those moms who they raise their daughters, they discipline the women in their family, they discipline their little girls. But then when it comes to their son, suddenly it's boys will be boys. And, you know, a lot of mothers, they have even said that it's easier to raise sons than it is to raise daughters. I know that I definitely felt this way, especially with my dad's side of the family. Um, and they were unambiguous monoracial black women, just for context. They absolutely treated my brother way more special than how they treated me. Like I even remember one time, one of my great aunts, she would like, she would tell my brother, she'd be like, oh, do you want me to make you some breakfast? And I remember she made him like this nice bowl of oatmeal. She didn't make me any oatmeal. And I remember standing outside of the kitchen being like, oh, can I have some oatmeal too? And then she was like, don't ever come in the kitchen and ask somebody a question like that. Like she started going off on me because I was too shy and timid with me asking for a bowl of oatmeal. So I remember what it was like being nitpicked as a young girl by older women in my family who were male centered, even when it came to raising their sons or like treating their sons and their nephews more special than how they treated their, their daughters or their nieces. But to be honest, I'm actually very grateful for it because it made me such a resilient person to where now I'm resilient enough to actually decenter men altogether. So I don't regret any of that. Um, that, that whole plan kind of backfired on them because I didn't end up growing up to become like them. But that's another part of decentering men, though. It's decentering your father's opinions. A lot of the women who uh, talk about colorism, texturism, featurism, um, being ashamed of how they look, the first man who made them ashamed of how they looked was their father in a lot of cases. Like maybe their dad said, you look like a slut. Like I've had um, friends where their dads would say they look slutty with blonde hair. Or I've, I've also had friends whose fathers were addicted to pornography. And then, you know, she as a young girl, she saw that and she kind of internalized her father's standard of beauty, which was sex workers and stuff like that. And so that's also a part of decentering men, at least on this channel. It's not just romantic. This goes deeper than just, I'm not going to revolve my life around a relationship. This is about thinking of men as a whole and whether or not they have helped and hindered your life. And it's about decentering the parts of your life where men have hindered it. Um, so for example, one thing that I stopped doing and it made my self-esteem go up so much was I have stopped listening to men's dating advice. Just in general, point blank period. If I see a podcast or something on my YouTube, well, they don't pop up on my YouTube anymore because I always hit the do not recommend button. But if I see some sort of podcast pop up where he's like, oh, this is what women should do, I don't even listen to it. Um, if it's some guy, like if it's my brothers or somebody in my family, some guy in my family trying to tell me this is what you need to do to like get a man, I know I no longer listen to it. And it has helped my self-esteem to go up. Um, it has helped me to cut off toxic relationships because also for a lot of the women who have their fathers in their life, like I, I have both of my parents in my life. My parents are still married to this day, but it's like, would you trade places with your mother? Would you trade relationship statuses with your mother? So for those of you whose parents are still married, would you be a wife like how your mother is? Because I know that for me, the answer is absolutely not. As much as I love my parents, as much as I love my mom and dad, I would not trade places with them. And so by me taking advice from single men or me taking advice from 50-50 men and all that, um, that's probably not going to lead me anywhere good. And so I have also decentered male content creators and, and men who give advice. Side note, 
Even when it comes to music, have you ever noticed that the most popular male musicians, they primarily have a female audience? Um, Chris Brown, Bruno Mars, Drake, they all have utilized the female audience or the female gaze to their advantage. And so I've noticed that even when it comes to the economy as a whole, the way that a lot of men operate is they will entice women or they will they will kind of build their careers off of the backs of women or they will build their careers off of the female gaze. A lot of popular male content creators and singers and rappers and stuff, they are popular because women are listening to them or because women find them desirable. So we actually have a lot more power than we think we do. And I've noticed that most male content creators, they will come on YouTube and their content is centered towards men and also women. Notice how a lot of us women, we know how to cultivate communities of our own. Like this channel is not male centered at all. I don't know why guys would even be like coming on this channel. I don't try to appease men on this channel. I, I'm not trying to brainwash men into doing what I want, but I have noticed, unfortunately, a pattern where if a man seeks to attain power, a part of how a man gains that power is by subjugating, controlling, or manipulating women or influencing women somehow, or kind of getting women to do the grunt work for him. I've seen this in the workplace as well, where the guy who is the head accountant, he will utilize the women accountants or the women financial assistants beneath him to kind of like do all of his grunt work for him and then you know they turn around and make him look good so I have noticed that a lot of guys just in general have had that tendency of kind of building off the backs of others think about the whole Barbara the Builder thing that goes on a lot of guys they will get with a Barbara the Builder so that he can then social climb off of her back and then he can get another woman after that so what I've noticed is that a lot of women will date below their league and then a lot of guys will try to date higher up. And so that man, he is dating a woman who's out of his league because he knows if he is attached to her, he gets to partake in the lifestyle that she has. He will upgrade his lifestyle. He will most likely be able to upgrade his finances. And then once that woman has built him up, now he has successfully social climbed and now he feels like he's better than her because he's like, wait a minute, I'm on your league now. I used to be only making $50,000 a year as an accountant, but now you have helped build me up to where now I'm making $100,000 a year and I've got a house and now you're in your 40s. So now I can just leave you and then I can level up again and find a 25 year old model or, you know, whatever he feels is like out of his league. So a part of decentering men for me is about stopping that cycle. It's about stopping the cycle of trauma that is attached to men. It is about no longer allowing guys to kind of manipulate us and make us do things that only work in their favor. Like for me personally, I have damn near decentered all of guys' dating standards. The attitude that I have now is more like take me or leave me, you either like me or you don't, as opposed to before when I was male-centered, I used to be more like, oh, what can I do and how can I shape myself and mold myself to fit into what he wants me to be? So that's the difference between centering men and then not centering them. When you're on your decentering men journey, I want you to think about the type of lifestyle you are going to live if you attach yourself to a man. So before I used to be a little bit more shallow, kind of only thinking of how validated I felt, thinking about how beautiful I felt when I was in this guy's presence or whatever. But now I like to look at that guy for face value. I no longer date based on potential, like, oh, he could he could have more money down the line. Like for the women who are saying the decentering men movement is BS and like you shouldn't do it, a lot of those women were making comments like, oh, well, he may not be able to pay all the bills now, but like later on, he's he might be able to pay more bills. This is just where he's at in life right now. Okay, that's fine if that's what you want, but that's not the type of lifestyle I want to live for myself. I believe that I'm smart, I'm talented, I'm capable. I believe that I am going to be upwardly mobile. I believe that this YouTube channel will help me to grow my wealth. I believe that one day I will become rich, I will become the millionaire. You know those women who say, I don't have to chase a rich man, I am a rich man? I truly do believe that I have the power and the creativity and the talent to attain whatever lifestyle I want for myself. And so I can eliminate the middleman. I can do all that without having to be cheated on and lied to. And I have to like chase after this guy, try to go cuss out his other woman so that he can buy me more stuff. I don't want to have to go through all of those traumas just to attain a few extra dollars. And so that's really the premise of decentering men. It, it doesn't mean like, 
oh, you can't interact with guys at all. It just means that you are keeping your dignity. It means that you are keeping your value. And also for the people who try to gaslight and say, oh, don't let social media keep you single. Um, Social media is not real life. And don't just look at everything you see on TikTok. You're getting your views from TikTok. You're getting all of your beliefs from Instagram and YouTube. So for for the social media is not real people, uh, first of all, social media is real. You know why? Because when your man was texting his ex, using social media, or when he was sending another girl dick pics on Instagram, those feelings of inadequacy you had were real. When your man was liking other girls' pics on Instagram or sliding into their DMs, that anger you felt was real. When your man was talking shit about your marriage on Reddit, or he was messaging guys in the group chat or messaging them on social media about how you have gained weight and he's not attracted to you anymore. Those feelings of resentment were real. So what do you mean by social media is not real? That's 100% pure gaslighting. The man who spent your money on OnlyFans, oh, that's just social media, it's not real. So I just feel like people who use that talking point, you're absolutely trying to gaslight because when we are discussing these topics on social media, it's not about the social media in and of itself. It's about what we are discussing, which is how to be emotionally healthy, how to be mentally healthy, and how to not allow a man the power to destroy your mental health using social media. So no, it's not, oh, you're just getting your views from TikTok. Oh, you're just getting all your beliefs from like random girls on the internet. And the same people who say that, it's like you guys, half of the guys who say that they got their beliefs from red pill guys on YouTube or they got it from, you know, following false religions or following these cults and these spiritual uh, people who seem to be awakened and they're really just abusive. So I could technically make the same argument about anything. And also, I guess the way that I view my personal decentering men journey is that I am not willing to be a pick me for any type of guy. So I've noticed that some women are actually still very male centered and they're still pick me's, but now they're just pick me's for a white guy, or you're just a pick me for a rich guy, or you're a pick me for a scientist or an engineer or an entrepreneur. Um, But for me personally, I don't care if a man's a millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, gazillionaire. I'm not going back to cheaters. You know, it's not worth getting cheated on. It's not worth the emotional abuse. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth the raised cortisol levels in my body and for my blood pressure to be going up and my hair turning gray just so I can have a Louis bag or go on a vacation. Why would I want to spend the next 70 years of my life going on a vacation with a man that I can't stand? And I have to open my legs to that man who could potentially be bringing me diseases or a man who is just, you know, he's not really even that into me. I'm supposed to feel validated by that. No, that doesn't make me feel validated. If it makes you feel validated, that's fine. But for me personally, my decentering men journey is about no longer settling for situations where I do not feel like I am being valued. And by the way, um, I do believe it is possible to be on a decentering journey, even if you are in a relationship or marriage or you live with a guy. Some people have been asking that lately. So the way that I do my decentering men journey, if I'm in a relationship, is I will calculate how many hours per week I spend on that relationship. And if I feel like I'm spending more hours with that guy than I am spending on, I don't know, my hobbies or, you know, my spiritual journey. Some of you guys are into spiritual stuff or whatever. You like yoga and all that kind of stuff. So it's like trying to balance that out and make sure that you do not start losing yourself and losing your identity and falling off of your personal goals so you could spend time with the guy. So for example, let's say you're in a relationship or you are dating, you're single and you're going on dates. The way that I did it was I would give myself a time limit. Like, okay, I am only going to hang out with this guy no more than 16 hours a week total. Or, you know, whatever amount of hours is like good for you. Like, okay, 40 hours a week I spent with this guy. How many hours per week did I spend on my fitness journey? How many hours per week did I spend on my wellness and cooking for myself and meal prepping for myself? How how many hours did I spend on my hair? That is something that I used to, um, I noticed that whenever I was dating a guy in the past, like I remember there was one particular guy where that relationship, it caused me to neglect my physical health. So I remember my hair goals, I started falling off. This is when I was like 19. My hair was breaking off and stuff because I was constantly just trying to impress him and only doing the hairstyle he liked, which was a curly high ponytail. So like my edges were being ripped out for this guy. Um, He didn't want to go work out. He just liked doing his own workouts. 
like on a pull up bar and stuff. So I didn't like doing that. So I started to fall off on my own uh, workout journey. So that's how you can do your decentering journey, even if you are with a guy or even if you are single and still dating. I've noticed a lot of decentering men content creators, they don't go into the nuances of how you can practically decenter a guy like today, even if you're dealing with a guy. So I, I can just go into that on this video. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things that I do is I calculate how many hours per week I spend with that guy. And then I make sure that I'm spending at least that same amount of hours on myself. And if I am not, I will tell the guy, hey, just so you know, I'm on like a self-love journey. I'm on a decentering men journey. I've actually told that to a guy before. You don't have to say those exact words, but you can say, hey, I'm doing my fitness journey and like I really like hiking. I haven't been able to do it lately, so I do want to be able to spend time doing that. Like I remember um, one guy that I had dated in, in the past, a boyfriend, he did not like any sort of outdoor activity. So I love hiking. I love uh, going running outside and going on hills and doing yoga outside. I'm, a, I'm an outdoorsy type of person when it comes to exercise. I love being around the trees and the flowers and like going to botanical gardens and stuff. And this guy, he didn't even want to go on a walk in the park. He just wanted to, he, he wanted to scroll his phone or whatever. He was very boring, like looking back, but he didn't want to do any of that. And I remember it actually influenced me to start falling off with my mental health journey. Because for me, being out in nature, it actually increases my mental health. There are studies that show that the negative ions in the trees, it helps your brain to release endorphins and stuff. So I, I incorporate being outdoors almost every day. So Part of my decentering men journey is, hey, I'm never going to let a man, no matter what my relationship status is, a man will never stop me from going outdoors again. Like that was something I learned from that relationship. I'm never again going to let a man stop me from going on my hikes. So if it means going on my hikes by myself without him, then so be it. If it means ditching him altogether, like let's say your guy, let's say he um, discourages you from going on hikes or he tries to project fear into you. Like I've, I've been around family members where they try to get me all scared. They'll be like, oh, there are bears outside. There are like mosquitoes and uh, random people have been getting robbed. And so they're trying to project fear onto me. A part of my decentering men journey is I don't allow other people to project their fears onto me. If I love doing that thing and it contributes to my mental health and makes me a better person, a man is not going to stop me from doing it. So yes, I'm going to continue my hiking and I'm going to stay on track with my fitness goals. Another part of my personal decentering journey that I've done, regardless of my relationship status, like even if I was with a guy, even if I had a boyfriend or something like that, no matter what, I am never again going to fall off on my fitness goals when I'm in a relationship. Because the thing that sucks, like if you are the type where you want a boyfriend or husband or whatever, if you get into a relationship and you got too comfortable and you gain the happy weight, now if that guy cheats on you or leaves you or you have to dump him for some reason, now you have to go through the whole dating process again. And now you're also behind, you know, you you fell off on your fitness goals. And so now you're not going to feel as confident when you go like on the dates or whatever the next time, or all of your cute clothes can't fit anymore. Your bikinis don't look as good anymore. And so I have learned over the years to never fall off on my fitness journey because it, it always used to make the breakup worse if I ended up having to dump the guy. And then also my goals are like in the trash can. So now I have to rebuild my whole entire life because I ended up revolving it around that guy. So one of the ways you can decenter a guy when you are still with him is never falling off on your fitness journey. Because if you if you're one of those girls who likes uh, you like casual dating and stuff like that, then guess what? Even if that guy dumps you, leaves you, cheats on you, you have to dump him. Okay, well, guess what? You still look gorgeous. Your body is still in shape. You don't have to worry about um, those micro insecurities of, oh, now I'm going back on the dating market and now my body looks like trash. Nope. So that's one of the ways of decentering that guy. It's, it's positioning yourself so that even if he leaves you, you won't be, you know, you won't feel behind in life or anything like that. Another way that you can decenter men while you are dealing with a man, let's say you're married or you have a boyfriend or something, or some guy's dating you, pursuing you, you still want to date, is one thing that I have done is I look for some sort of talent or skill or gift or something that that guy can teach me 
And then if he can help me in any area or if I can benefit from his skills, then I will benefit from his skills. So for example, um, part of the reason why I do not regret my past relationships is because I know how to pick a guy to where even if the relationship doesn't work out, I have still, I haven't lost anything. Um, so for example, one guy, he knew that I had bad credit at this time and he had excellent credit. He's very good, you know, even though he ended up being trash and I had to dump him, he was very good with managing credit cards and stuff like that and like building credit and maintaining a high credit score. So he actually helped me to rebuild my credit. He put my name on his like credit card or whatever. So even after the relationship ended, my credit score still went up. Obviously I got my name removed like afterwards just in case, but that guy helped me to build my credit up to, to where I got like, you know, thousands of dollars more worth of credit to this day. And that was because of him helping me at the time. Um, for some of you guys, maybe you are dating a certain guy because he, he provides for you. I've, I've heard of women, you know, they want to get married hypergamously. They want to be a stay at home mom. So that's another way that you can kind of decenter the man himself and you can compartmentalize whatever skills that guy brings into the relationship. And those things can help improve your life in some way. So like, with some girls, I know of this one girl, she does Instagram, she's like an Instagram influencer, and she dated this guy, and he happened to be very good at photography. So he would take all of her really good photos and stuff, he took photos of her like for her business. Um, I personally, I would do more than just like him, his photography, but that was valuable to her. So that's another way that you can benefit from a relationship. Let's say you have a certain business, and maybe he can help you with that business or he has a certain skill that can help you to push your business forward. That's a way of kind of decentering men because in that moment, you're not focused on the man himself. You are focused on the labor or the skills that you can utilize from that man. And there's no need to feel bad about this because men do this to women all the time. They are expecting you to use your sexual labor. You know, you're going to be basically his sex worker if you are married to him. You are supposed to be cooking or you know whatever their standards are it's fine for you to have standards as well honestly there's really no right or wrong way to do it as long as once you leave the relationship you do not regret having got into the relationship so that was one of my methods for like decentering men regardless of whether i was dating or not so let's say you're casual dating let's say you do not want a boyfriend you simply want to be wined and dined you want to be taken out you want to be um, maybe you want to go out with like all the attractive guys or something like that. Maybe you're young in your twenties, whatever. So when it comes to casual dating, one of the ways that you can still decenter the guy while casual dating is you are picking places that you've always wanted to go either way. So even if that guy goes to you, if you never see him again, at least you got to be taken to the opera. You got to be taken on a vacation. You got to be taken to whatever food place you've really wanted to go to. You got to go to the concert. You got to go to all of these fun experiences with a guy that you were attracted to. That's another thing. Um, that was a part of my decentering men journey. I am not giving guys a chance anymore if I do not find them to be very attractive because a lot of guys, honestly, I'm so grateful for the red pill movement. I'm so grateful for all these podcasters, the alpha males or whatever. I'm so glad that they are publicly giving their thoughts on the internet because you will see that those guys, they don't give an F. Like if you are ugly, they won't date you. They won't even like give you the time of day. So why do we as women have to date guys that we find to be physically repulsive? So for a part of my personal decentering journey, I know that not all women do this, but for me personally, I have, I'm not giving an ugly guy a chance. I don't care if he's a trillionaire. I don't care if he's a gazillionaire. I'm no longer giving uglies a chance. I'm no longer going to pretend that I like looking at him when I find him to be repulsive and his breath stinks and all that. I'm not dealing with that anymore because that ruins the experience for me. For some women, they don't care because maybe he's spending money on them or something or he's they like his personality. That's fine. Please, by all means, take the ugly guys off of our hands. Um, but I personally, I'm no longer dealing with it. And that was a part of my decentering men journey because I no longer care if men think I'm shallow. So I, I'm not centering men's opinions. I don't have to prove that I'm a good person by dating an ugly guy. Like, no, I don't have to prove to the world that I'm not shallow. I'll just let guys think that I'm shallow. That's fine. But guess what? I don't have to deal with any uglies. For some women, um, the way that they decenter men while they are dating is by roster dating or talking to a whole bunch of guys at one time. And this is because 
men are obviously doing this. Like if you are not in an exclusive relationship, then you can talk to multiple guys because uh, if one of those guys ghosts you or he doesn't like you or something, then you don't even notice it because you've got a whole bunch of other guys. Basically the same methods that men would try to use on women. You know how I talked about men wanting female orbiters and emotional orbiters? The same game that they are attempting to play with you, you can level the playing field and even things out by doing the exact same thing. So if he doesn't mention exclusivity, then you are not exclusive. Like you are still, you can talk to whoever you want, um, you do not have to give that guy any of your extra time or any extra investment or any attention, especially if he's not even taking you on like dates and stuff. I personally, part of my decentering journey when it came to that was I'm not giving a guy any attention unless that guy has asked me out or something or, you know, he wants to take me somewhere to talk to me. Great. Other than that, I will say hi. I will say goodbye. I will be cordial. I'll be respectful. You know, if he says, oh, hey, I see him in the gym or something. Okay, hi, good to see you. And that's it. I'm not talking to guys on the phone for hours anymore, especially guys that are not invested in me. They have no emotional attachment to me whatsoever. Because oftentimes the guys that want to talk to you for a long time, they're doing that because they want to get you emotionally attached and hooked in because he knows that he doesn't have anything else to offer. Have you ever noticed that? For a lot of guys, all they have to offer is maybe some sweet words and maybe some dick and a PS5. I don't know. So it's like, I'm not going to waste all of my time talking on the phone. Like, no, I remember one time this guy, he wanted to talk to me on the phone. I was like, Hey, I can only talk for like a couple of minutes because I have to do my errands. And my errand that I was doing was I needed to go to Trader Joe's and get my meals for the week and do my meal prepping and like organize my outfits, like for my fitness routine and stuff. So yes, that is a part of my level up journey. Yes. Going to Trader Joe's is important to me. I need to be able to get there before the store closes. So no, I'm not going to talk to a guy all night long and now I have no food in my apartment for the rest of the week. Meanwhile, I don't know if I'm ever going to see this guy again. No. So now I'm at a point where it's like I'm not even talking on the phone like at all, like whatsoever. Or maybe I can talk for like 5 to 15 minutes depending on my mood. Um, but definitely not these long ass three and a half hours, four hour conversations in three hours. Do you know how many YouTube videos I can record in three hours? Like seriously, I could have recorded three hours worth of content. I could have started a whole entire series on YouTube that would propel my channel into a higher bracket of subscribers in three hours. But instead I'm on the phone talking to Henry. Like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And that's a part of my personal decentering journey. That's one of the ways you can decenter men if you are still dealing with them. So do you see the nuance? Like some women are going to completely not talk to guys at all. Other women are like, you will talk to him, but only on a limited uh, spectrum. So you only have a certain time limit where you're available. And the guy kind of has to get in where he fits in, as opposed to you rearranging your whole life in hopes that this guy will ask you out. You know how some women will not make any plans for the weekend because they're hoping that XYZ rich guy will ask them to go on a date? No, I'm not doing that. Part of my decentering men journey is whether I'm interacting with guys or not, if I am interacting with guys, I'm not going to cancel any plans. I'm not canceling any girls trips. I'm not canceling my family vacations. I'm not doing any of that in hopes that a guy will want to be with me or he will ask me out. I'm not doing any of that. I'm going to continue enjoying my life. I'm not going to fall behind on any of my personal goals. And also remember, you want to always be building up yourself. Like that's the biggest thing I learned. Um, it's whether I'm dealing with a guy or not, I want to always be continuously leveling myself up because if I'm not leveling myself up, I'm probably leveling him up and I'm probably just working for him for free and I don't realize it, like I've lost myself in the relationship. So when I get home from work, I'm cooking and cleaning for him. I'm doing the laundry for him. I'm doing everything making his life easier and making my life harder. I didn't do my own laundry. I didn't cook myself a special meal or go to the store and get myself some ingredients for a fresh salad. Nope, I didn't have time for any of that because I only had time to help Scott with building his business or with doing his hobbies. Because if there's one thing I've learned about guys, it's that 
Most guys, they're not going to give up their hobbies and their passions and dreams for a woman. Well, actually, I, I kind of believe that most guys don't have a passion. But when it comes to their hobbies, a lot of guys, they're not giving that up for you. So if he's training for a Tough mutter or a marathon or something, he's still going to do that. If he is joining a rowing team or joining a hockey or a lacrosse team, he's still going to do it. He's going to go to his practice or he's going to go to that hiking group or go to the adult volleyball league and he's going to be still playing volleyball with all of his friends and you're just going to be sitting at home. So I no longer allow myself to lose myself in a relationship to where he gets to enjoy his life and I'm just revolving everything around him. You know the women who are like at home while their man is out doing his hobbies? She's the one preparing the meals for when he comes home. She's the one helping him on his recovery journey. So she's giving him massages. She's doing the foam rollers for him and stuff. She's over here like really preparing everything just for him. That's what I mean when I say male-centered because it's like instead of you spending that time to work on yourself or build your own business on the side, you're spending it investing into him. So now there are two people investing into his dreams and nobody is investing into yours. Another way that I have learned to decenter men if I still want to deal with them is to limit the capacity in which I deal with them. So for some women, this means you're not going to ever have children. So you can get married, but you're not having children with a guy. Or for other women, it's like you don't want to get married at all. You don't want to have children at all. You don't want to live with a guy at all. So you're down for boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe casual dating, maybe roster dating, maybe friends with benefits, but nothing more than that. And then there are other women who are like, nope, I'm just done completely. I'm going to be single and celibate or asexual, whatever. You buy a toy or something because don't even get me started on the orgasm gap. So some women are like, nope, I'll just buy a toy. At least I have a guaranteed orgasm and I'm not worried about a guy at all. So you have to do whichever one works the best for you. But another way you can decenter men or start your decentering men journey if you're already in a relationship is by starting your level up journey without him. So not telling him every single thing that you're doing. And I'm not saying hiding it, but like, for example, I remember this is like before I got divorced. Um, I just started naturally wanting to level myself up. So instead of getting mad at my ex-husband, like he won't go walking with me or he doesn't want to go to the coffee shop with me. He doesn't want to do X, Y, Z. I started to do those things by myself and get used to being by myself. I actually started this YouTube channel at that time and I just um, started gradually enjoying life on my own. Eventually I realized that, you know, the growth wasn't matching. But um, if you are in a relationship and maybe he's growing at the same rate as you or he's growing past you or something, then that's fine. But that's what I mean when I say starting your decentering journey. It just means getting back to who you are. Like if that man did not exist, what would you be doing right now? And it's about living as much of your life like that as possible. It doesn't mean you have to like be mean or anything. It doesn't mean you have to like disrespect anybody or like randomly hate on guys or anything like that. It just means that you are still prioritizing yourself. So let's say you're on a weight loss journey. Cause one thing I've noticed is that a lot of women will get into marriages in particular and then they start getting too comfortable. Like I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but I've seen a lot of women have a glow down once they get married or once they're in a long-term relationship or after kids, I can kind of understand a little bit more because you're taking care of a baby. Um, but when it comes to relationships, like one thing I've learned is to continue to stay on my glow up journey. And it doesn't have to just be physical. This is also mental. So reading the books I want to read, learning the skills that I want to learn, continuing to raise up my own income, build my own savings account. It doesn't have to be something sneaky or malicious, but it just means that you are protecting yourself in the event that your guy is subscribed to OnlyFans because 97% of the guys on OnlyFans are, you know, married. So it's like you're still protecting yourself in the event that he does betray you or leave you. And by the way, the decentering men journey, it doesn't have to start because of traumas. So um, a lot of people, they think that like if you're decentering men, you must be really mad at them or you must be like bitter or something like that. Like for me, I started this journey because I, I didn't want to become like bitter. That, that's actually why I started it. I didn't want to become like bitter or angry. Because remember, in order to hate someone, you have to like still be centering them. You have to still be putting them on a pedestal in your heart. You have to still be like really thinking about them a lot in order to hate them. So for me, the decentering men movement, it actually helped me to just not really care. You know, it helped me to just not have any anger or resentment because 
But the disappointment was gone because the desire was gone. The desire was no longer as strong or anything. So I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything like before. Because you know how some guys, they will do this with women where they they were entitled. They've been lied to about women. They thought that if they have a good job and they're six feet tall, then suddenly you're just going to have women like knocking down your door. And then they realize that that was wrong. And then they'll get mad at women. Then they'll be enraged at women and like become misogynist. But the reason they're doing that is because deep down inside, they felt entitled to women. They felt like women owed them something because of their achievements. Like we somehow owe them sex or we somehow owe them a pedestal. And so those men are actually very female centered because they didn't give themselves the pedestal. They gave women the pedestal and they thought that women would then give them a pedestal. And so for me, decentering men, it's about taking the guy off the pedestal and just putting myself on the pedestal and saying, hey, I'm still going to be happy regardless of what happens in life. Another thing that really helped me um, on my decentering journey, so if you're with a guy right now or you've just discovered this, you have a boyfriend or you're married or you haven't decided if you want to break up with your guy, um, one thing that you can do is just stay informed. That was another thing that really helped me on my decentering men journey because I didn't realize that I really did not understand men. I didn't really realize that until I really got into the decentering men, the stats and the articles and like all of these different experiences that other women were having. Um, and so it really helped to, first of all, it helped to restore my sense of self. It helped me to realize, wait a minute, okay, I'm not crazy. Okay, there's nothing wrong with me. Okay, it's not that I'm not good enough or something like that. It, it has to do more so with how men have been socialized or kind of like the nature of men. So going into relationships with that knowledge or interacting with men with the knowledge that, hey, there's a 70% chance that this is not going to work out. Like statistically, those are the stats on people who are unmarried. There's about a 70% chance that if you have a boyfriend, you're going to break up. So knowing that before getting into the relationship, it helped me to kind of keep my head out of the clouds and not start deifying him or making it like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is my soulmate. It's going to be perfect because I was going into it knowing the actual information, knowing the facts, knowing the trends, knowing that, hey, if you get into a marriage, just so you know, there is a 50% chance of divorce and the average marriage only lasts nine years. And there's also a common phenomenon about men cheating after seven years. So it could be seven years boyfriend and girlfriend or seven years married. Um, hence why they even have a term for it, the seven year itch. But knowing all that information going in, it helps to um, kind of redirect your focus. And it also helps you to be more realistic about what you actually want. So then you can ask yourself the right questions like, hey, Am I willing to get married to this guy if I feel like there's a chance he could be cheating? Am I willing to marry a guy who won't show me his phone? Am I willing to marry a guy who will still text his ex? Or do I want to be with a guy who still has female friends, like a whole bunch of female friends? Um, I know kind of like the types, like the mindset of guys who are like that. So do I want that in my life? That's the point of the decentering men movement. It's to give you the other side of information that the Disney Channel didn't give you, that Christianity didn't give you, that the Bible didn't give you. Another way that you can decenter men if you're still if you're still dealing with them is by asking yourself, how much am I willing to sacrifice to keep this man in my life? And there is no wrong answer. That's that's a personal question that you can just ask yourself. Am I willing to sacrifice my goals? Am I willing to sacrifice my womb? and just birth a child for this man, even if there's a risk of him leaving me or something bad happen, happening. Um, am I willing to sacrifice 50% of my income to go 50-50 with this man? Am I willing to sacrifice 40% of my income to go 60-40 with him? Am I willing to sacrifice 30% of my income to go 70-30? Remember, 90% of men in the US make less than 100K. So that's another question you can ask yourself. Am I willing to get married to a man who makes less than 100K? Meaning that he can't afford the four bedroom house, depending on where you live. He can't afford a beautiful beach house or like all these vacations. And no, you're going to be paying for those vacations. You're going to be paying 50, you know, most likely 50, 50. You're going to be paying for those things. So it's about asking yourself the right questions too. Like, how much am I willing to sacrifice to be with this man? Am I willing to not have orgasms for the rest of my life? Or like not have very many orgasms or not have consistent pleasure when I'm with him? Or, you know, am I willing to accept all of his flaws? That's a huge question that the decentering men movement helped me to ask myself. How many flaws of a man am I willing to accept and deal with for the rest of my life? 
like marriage. I, I would hope that people who are getting married, hopefully you're getting married with the hopes of it lasting as long as possible. Um, so it's about asking myself, like, what flaws, what flaws from a man am I willing to deal with for the rest of my life or for the next nine years? Because that's the average length of a marriage. What flaws of his am I willing to deal with for the next nine years? By the way, side note, marriage was created uh, without people intending for it to last forever. So just a little fact, just so you guys know, you may want to read your history books and read up on the history of marriage, why it was created. Um, because even when they created marriage, they weren't creating it under the premise that it would last forever. Just so you guys know, back when marriage was popularized as a legal um, document, people, they only, uh, their life expectancy was anywhere from 24 to 50 years old. So we know that nowadays, uh, the average black man's life expectancy is around 70 years old. And so the life expectancy for men back when marriage was popularized, it wasn't even as, as long as it is today. So back when marriage was created, people weren't doing it like, oh, we're expecting you to be married for like 60 and 70 years and it means you love each other and all that. So that was a part of my decentering men journey as well was recognizing like, okay, wait a minute, where did I get this marriage pedestal from? Like, where did, where did my desire for marriage come from? Okay, it came from Disney Channel. Why did I take on something from Disney Channel and make my life revolve around it? Why am I revolving my life around Disney Channel? Oh, wait, okay, it came from Christianity. Okay, am I revolving my life around Christianity? Or like, how important is Christianity to me? Do I feel like I am less of a woman of God because I am not married? Or, you know, it's about unpacking all of those um, subliminal mindsets that you may have that are affecting your interactions with men. That's another way that you can kind of start going on your own decentering men journey. Because another reason why marriage transitioned from economic to emotional was because a lot of the poor men back then, so the men who were not aristocrats, the men who were not like, um, you know, high level men in society, they did not have access to women because the kings and stuff, they would have not only wives, but they would also have like concubines and stuff like that. And this was all tied to women not having access to money and stuff like that. But a lot of men, they were kind of like incels back in the day or like just not having access to a woman or not being able to have children and stuff like that or not even knowing who their children were because they'd be going to maybe brothels or whatever. But back in the day, a lot of men who had nothing to offer would try to brainwash women, for lack of better words, they would try to brainwash women into saying, oh, I, I have all of these romantic feelings for you. And so because of that, you should come and dedicate your life to me. And you know, my emotions towards you are more powerful than like all this guy's money and like living in this huge castle. And so that was actually a part of the transition from bringing marriage from being just this contract like with no love involved whatsoever to making it something that was also synonymous with love so another part of the decentering men journey is really taking a deep dive into history reading up just just doing a quick google search why was marriage created um who who created marriage like is it a religious thing was it more of a legal thing why did men back in the day have like 10 wives and like all these different concubines and stuff what was that about so just looking into that and then deciding, okay, now that I know this information, is marriage beneficial to me? By the way, this channel is not created to convince you to do anything. I'm not trying to tell you you should or shouldn't be with a guy, you should or shouldn't get married or anything like that. Do with this information what you will. This is just supposed to be me giving you information and it's really just me processing my thoughts out loud, honestly. So there is no right or wrong answer. But one of the ways you can start to decenter men, whether you have a boyfriend or a husband or not, is also, you know, just reading about boyfriend, girlfriend relationships, what the dynamics are usually like, if you like the dynamics of those relationships, and really studying your own mindset and why you made the decision you made, and then, you know, deciding from there what the best decision is for you. Um, but just a couple of quick stats. In 2021, a total of 689,308 divorces occurred across the U.S. So that's more than half a million divorces. Also on this same article, this is a Forbes article, it says that the U.S. marriage rate is only about 6 per 1,000 people. So for those of you who feel like, oh, I'm somehow missing out because I'm not married or like I'm weird for not being married, well, no, um, you're... 
only about six out of 1,000 people get married. So that's actually a part of the reason why I think people put it on a pedestal because they feel like, oh, it's so rare. So like, I must be very special if I'm getting married as opposed to everybody else. By the way, I just pulled up another interesting um, divorce stat. So the, the industries that have the highest divorce rate are architecture and engineering is number one, then computers and mathematics, and then the military. I knew military would be one of the top. Um, life, physical, and social sciences, education and library, healthcare, so if you're with a doctor, um, community and social services, farming, fishing, and forestry, finance, and legal. Those are the top 10 industries where they have the highest divorce rates. So that's something else you may want to keep in mind. Let's say you're dating hypergamously or something like that. You may want to ask yourself, okay, what's my type because you know how some women say, oh, I want a doctor, I want a lawyer. So those are certain things that you may want to look into on your decentering men journey. So instead of only focusing on the man, it's about also doing your own background research. Like, okay, this guy is a lawyer. What are the stats on lawyers? So for example, a part of my um, decentering men journey, thankfully I've never dated a military guy because I'm just, I'm very into psychology and there are so many studies and stuff on the, the mental illnesses that a lot of the military men have as well as the children of people who were like in the military army navy whatever and so I know for me on my dating journey I was like oh I'm not gonna date anybody that is in the military or had a parent in the military so that's another part of the decentering men journey it's deciding what type of man you are not going to date so yes money is a factor but for me personally I don't care if you're a gazillionaire if you are a military person I'm not interested so that's another part of you taking back your power and decentering men. It's by doing your own research and then deciding for yourself, okay, this is what I'm willing to deal with. This is what I'm not willing to deal with. Something else that I personally wouldn't do ever again is long distance relationships of any kind. Um, I just, that doesn't meet my needs. Like I would want someone who is right there next to me, you know, so you could, you could think about that too. Like, would I do a long distance relationship where it's like, we can't even talk. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know where he's at. He hasn't called me back. Like he's out of town. He travels a lot. By the way, I just came across a Yahoo Finance article and it has professions most likely to cheat. Sales, teacher training and education, healthcare, transport and logistics, hospitality and event management, engineering and manufacturing, property and construction, oh yeah, the construction workers, accountants, banking and finance, information technology, so the IT guys, and the armed forces. So that's something else that you can do is just equip yourself with different information. It doesn't mean you have to like make all of your decisions just based on articles, but you also, you have that in your bank of knowledge so that you can move strategically if you are dating a guy like that right now. Maybe you're dating a guy who is a high level accountant and he travels a lot and you've been suspecting that, hey, you know, he's not texting me back or like, I feel kind of uneasy, like I wonder if he's cheating and now you've got the information that that's one of the top cheating professions. Like maybe it can help you to make more strategic decisions for yourself. And that is the point of the decentering men movement. It's not supposed to be about hating men or anything. It's not supposed to be about like completely isolating yourself if you don't want to. But if you are dealing with men, it's about being smart and making sure that you know information, making sure that you are not basing your views on men based off of the Bible, because men ain't Jesus, okay? Whatever man you're dealing with, he's not Jesus, he's not the Apostle Paul, he is not Bartholomew and Thomas and all these other guys, he's none of those guys. And he is also not a Disney character. He's not Prince Charming, he's not the knight in shining armor, he is a normal human being with flaws. So I'm probably gonna talk about this a little bit more on this YouTube channel, but what do you ladies think? What have you done on your decentering men journey? What does decentering men mean to you? Do you feel like decentering men works only for privileged women or it's easier if you're privileged, whether it's pretty privileged or you are rich or something like that? What do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.